Hi, my name is Ariella Safira, and I'm the founder and CEO of Real, a mental health care company building a new therapy model. We raised $53 million to date, most recently closing our Series B round, and we have about 60 employees at Real. I was raised in New Jersey. Uh, by two parents who are immigrants, and I think that very much informed my way of building real. And I uh, went over to Stanford for university, and that's sort of where the impetus of real began when a friend of mine had a very traumatic experience with her mental health. She um, had attempted to take her life, and that was you know, the first time I'd ever seen the mental health care system. It was the first time I'd ever seen a rehab or therapy or meds and I thought the system made no sense, so I threw myself at it and I've not stopped working on it since. And the thinking for real then is the same as it is now, which is, you know, while we have so many companies that are putting the system that exists already online, right, or putting the system that exists already under a unique employer contract, the very issue I felt and we feel is that like, that system doesn't work. Right, it doesn't scale to every American. It's certainly not affordable. Um, it doesn't prove clinical outcomes for the vast majority of our like, diverse country. And it doesn't meet people soon enough, right? It takes an average of 11 years for someone to reach care after symptoms of illness. And that's a traumatic experience to spend 11 years struggling. And it's also just hard to treat crisis. Sometimes it's impossible to treat crisis. It is always expensive to treat crisis. But if we meet people much sooner in their journeys, we really have the ability to make an impact in mental health in this country. It just requires a very different care model. I often attribute my passion for mental health to my dad, who was raised in a kibbutz, which is a commune. Uh, and that means he prioritizes community more than anything else and caring for people. And so I think growing up, I had a very clear role model that made it obvious to us caring for other people is what matters most. And through that lens, I probably was much more in tune with how unwell others are doing, how people in my own family might be struggling, though I didn't know of a care system. You know, I think I had very much understood and felt how many people in my life had struggled, both in my family and my friend groups, teachers I went to high school with, but I had no concept of what, like a, I had a concept of what is unwellness and struggling no connection to like what is therapy and psychiatry. Um, and my friend's experience was the first time I'd ever really seen firsthand what does that care system look like. I probably experienced mental unwellness more personally after that. I was fortunately a pretty happy-go-lucky kid um, or well and like every human come adulthood, <laughs> understood much more clearly what does it mean to be struggling? What does depression look like, right? What is like the darker realities of um, mental health look like? And um, by that point, I could also feel firsthand a sense of like, I would never see a therapist, right? And it was kind of wild at that point that I had seen my friend's journey, researched the system so well, probably outside of therapists, I was like the number one person who could name, like, how do you find a clinician? What does this look like? And even so, I'm like, yeah, I wouldn't do that. And that's, that's pretty jarring. I do think the uh, journey of founding Real has been a mental health journey. And it's so, you know, we founded Real in the pandemic, basically. And to combine solo founding a company with the pandemic and the isolation it comes with, you know, that results in an isolating journey, uh, exhausting journey. And it wasn't until like, I kind of was running on a wild amount of fuel, probably until like we raised or closed the series B. And then my body just had a collapsing, like, woof, I need <laughs> uh, a break from this. And um, what did that look like? I don't know. I mean, the, the uniqueness of mental health care and mental health is that it's so hard to name. I was just a very isolating, exhausting two years. And I feel fortunate that I'm, despite being a solo founder, pretty like, supported by advisors, partners, investors. Um, but even so, it's just like we pivoted a company in a pandemic that requires like really fast decision making on really massive, expensive decisions and the like fuel to raise the next round within you know, like a 20, 20 minute pivot. 
And that was just like a, a wild mental journey. I wish, you know, after founding real, I should have better language for this, but it's um, isolating is certainly one word. I think after two years, I just huh, really hit a moment of like, God, I got a reset. It's like not good for my health. Um, and I was able to really, because we have, you know, obviously a team where we can openly speak about these things. And I think it was valuable for folks in the team to see me openly share um, what a challenging journey it's been and that I need to like chill out a bit. Uh, and they definitely supported, like, you know, I think every person sort of rallied around. Like, I'll step up during this like month of Ariella, figuring out a calmer <laughs> way of living. I still remember like taking a meeting with a pretty major health plan partner and hopping on the meeting. I'm like, guys, I can't even do this meeting. <laughs> like, I can't even do a 45 minute call right now. I, I'm fried, right? I'm burnt out. Uh, to I mean, and I'm still great friends with all those people on that call, so they were very human and understanding. But you know, that call ended, and I called uh, one of our advisors, Taryn, and, and shared. I'm like, I just need a break right now. Like, this is I don't have it in me to do more years of this. I can't even do a day of this right now. And she was phenomenal. I mean, I always say Kate and Taryn both, uh, they're two advisors, but they've sort of been my like behind the scenes co-founders and people who are close enough to the company to understand the ins and outs, what's working, what's not, but far enough away that I could feel like such a depthful trust in them and a connection that allows me to call them after a day like that to say, God, I can't move forward. And they really stepped up, stepped in as they always do and basically like, all right, take the day, we'll figure out like, how do we move forward from here? It's so interesting to be a company leader because you both need to be, you know, the person who's like rallying on the mission when like everyone else is exhausted, but you also do need to be human and relatable, right? Especially now people want their leader to be someone who could say, this is what battling with depression looks like, right? And these are the parts of the job that are hard. Like, don't worry, we're still gonna figure it out and I'm gonna figure it out but also I'm a human who's like figuring it out. Um, and I think I know many people on the elite team had communicated that that month was really impactful for them to see me communicate where I was at mental health wise and, and for me to trust that they could take on the responsibilities that they did. The scary thing about depression is you don't real, realize it in the moment. You realize so often you realize that when you come out of it, I just became a lot better at asking friends for help. And I'm someone who's like incredibly, I think resourceful. I know how to ask for help, but I know I do the research of who should I ask for help and when will I get an answer and like that, that, that sort of mentality. And I've been a lot better at just communicating to people I love. I like I'm feeling anxious and I'm just gonna openly ask for your care and support, which is something that still is kind of uncomfortable to me um, and definitely didn't grow up in a family that did that. So community helps quite a bit. Talking about it helps quite a bit. Um, being okay with things not going phenomenally well. Still not great at that, but yeah, there's no one, I mean, why? I think why real will have work to do for the rest of eternity is because mental health is so complex. There isn't one cure. There was, isn't one measure that, that proves you are well or not. And I probably lived that for the past few months. Um, I think one of the things that has always helped me the most is hearing other people's stories that are comparable to mine. Um, and I think we all have examples, like who are the stories or the characters that we most relate to. I would say mine is probably the most, the immigrant's kid. Um, and th that's certainly fused how we build on real. And it's sort of a core tenet of group therapy that like, people grow and develop and improve by hearing the stories of others and using those as like touch points. So often when it comes to mental health, we don't have the language. I don't, right? We, we learn from either school or like what we see in the media and both lacked mental health education. Still do, definitely did while we were growing up. I think so often we're just like grasping for language to understand our own story. And what's powerful for me is to hear what does this look like for other people? And more than talk, for me, it's talking about it myself is not nearly as valuable as 
hearing what it looks like for other people. Cause I talk to myself all day. Like I, <laughs> I don't need more of this voice, um, but it's really valuable to hear honest takes from others. Thank you.